Hi everyone and welcome to a new video on the CBI channel. In this brand new series we're going to be creating a full stack web application using Python Django in the backend and React.js in the frontend. Now over the course of this series I'm going to be focusing on several different topics which are going to help you becoming a better developer such as setting up our Python Django backend and our React.js frontend. I'm going to show you how you can enable page navigation and create a nice looking navigation menu using components from Material UI. I'm going to tell you all about data models in our backend and cover the full process of creating, reading, updating, and deleting records both in the backend and the frontend. And I'm also going to show you extensively how you can handle select fields and multi-select fields inside of your Django and React application. And after this series, you will have an application that looks like this, where we have a nice looking user interface with a menu on the left hand side, where we have the home page, which shows a bunch of different records that we have created in our database. And we also have different pages for creating records, but also for some other functionalities. Now in this first video, we're going to be focusing on setting up our Django backend. And we're going to be doing that by following seven steps. We're going to start by creating a virtual environment. And that environment is going to store all of the packages that we're using during development. Next, we're going to be installing some packages that we will need to create our backend. And we will be creating our Django project and a Django app. Then we need to make some changes to our Python Django settings file and also include some of the URLs from our newly created app. And as a last step, we will migrate our database models, which will complete the setup of our backend. Now we're going to build this completely from scratch and the code will also be available on my GitHub, which will be linked in the description. So as a first step, we're going to create a new folder for our project. So on my desktop, I'm going to be adding a new folder and I'm going to be calling this full stack app. And now we will go over to Visual Studio Code. And in there we can do file, open folder, and make sure that we are going to be working inside of the full stack app folder, because that is where our project is going to live. Now inside of this full stack app folder, we're actually going to be creating another folder. So we click the folder icon, and in there I'm going to create a separate folder for all of the work we're going to be doing in our backend. Uh, and by doing this, we have the development of the backend and the front end split it across those folders, which makes it a little bit easier. Now, the first real step we need to take here is creating a virtual environment. And that virtual environment is going to store all of the packages that we use during the development. Now, before we can create that, we actually need to have an install ready so that we can create a virtual environment. So we're going to be opening a new terminal and we're going to go over to the documentation of virtual ENV, which is going to enable us to create a virtual environment inside of our project. So I'm going to copy over this pip install and I will also make sure that this link is available in the description. And now inside of our project, we can CD into our backend folder because that's where we want to do the work. And then we can install the package by doing Python dash M and then pip install virtual ENV. And that should install the package on our computer. Now, the next step is creating that virtual environment. And we can do that with a single command. And we do that with Python dash M and then VNV for virtual environment. And then thereafter, we can pick the name. And I'm also going to set that to VNV. And let's see what happens. And it is now complete. And inside of our backend folder, you can see that another folder has appeared called VENV. And in there, it is going to store all of the packages that we're using during the development. Now, that is very convenient because it could be that in this project, I use a certain version of Django. But maybe if I create a project in two years time, I want to use an entirely different version. And a virtual environment allows you to install packages inside of your project so that everything is project specific, which means I can use different versions of packages in different projects. Now, to make sure that it actually captures what packages we are installing and what we're doing, we need to activate this environment when we are working inside of our backend. So whenever we work on the backend, we always do first venv slash scripts slash activate inside of our terminal and then press enter. And now you can see that before my path, it actually shows VNV. 
And this is the sign that our virtual environment is now active. So everything we do is captured within that environment. And that brings us to the next step, which is installing some packages. Because we're going to be creating our Django backend, meaning that we also need to install Django inside of our project. So right now we're on the Django documentation, and I'll also include this link in the description. And if we scroll down a little bit right here, you can see that we can install Django by doing python-m and then pip install Django. So we're going to copy over this command right here, and we're going to go back to our terminal. And within our virtual environment, we paste in the command for installing Django. And Django is now installed inside of your project. And if you want to make sure that it's installed correctly, you can always do python-m and then django-version. And that should provide you with the version of Django that is installed inside your environment. And in our case, that is Django 5.1.3. So now that we have Django installed inside of our virtual environment, we can actually start our project. So to create a Python Django project, we can go to the terminal and we can type in Django slash admin and then start project. And after that, we specify the name of our project. Now, in this case, we're going to be building a CRUD app. So I'm going to be calling it CRUD. And after CRUD, I'm going to put a dot. And the dot is going to make sure that we don't get any nested folders, but it's all gonna do it in one level. So let's do this and see what happens. And you can now see inside of our backend folder that we do not only have our virtual environment, but we also have a folder called CRUD with a bunch of different files inside of it. So in here, we have our backend project with the settings of our backend, all of the URLs that there are available, and also some settings for the WSGI and the ASGI. Now, what you typically see within Django is that you create different apps underneath your project, which contain the APIs that you're going to bring to the front end, because that way you can split it up into different sections. So in this video, I'm going to do that as well. And I'm going to be creating a new app within our Django project. So to create that new app, we're going to do Python and then manage.py. And then we say start app. And I'm going to be calling this app API. And now let's see what happens. And now we see a new folder appearing on the top called API, which also has files for models and views. So how I will be working from my Django backend is I'm going to be using this CRUD folder as the base of the project, which is going to hold everything related to the settings uh, and also brings all of the URLs together. But I'm going to be using this API folder to create all of the actual APIs that we are going to bring to the front end and which is going to handle the logic for creating, reading, updating, and deleting records. Now, what I just mentioned is that inside of the CRUD folder, everything is going to come together. Um, and that means that we also need to actually list down the new app of API inside of our settings.py file. So inside of our settings.py file, we have all of the settings of our application. And I'm just going to delete all of the text that it has on the top because it's not that relevant. Now, what we need to do right now is register this API app inside of the installed app section of our project. So we can simply go and add a new line. And in there, we just register API. And just like that, we have told our Django CRUD project that API is part of the entire application. Now, next to the settings.py file, we also need to make sure that this CRUD folder includes all of the potential URLs that we create in the API folder. Now, to do that, we first gonna go into the API folder. And in there, we're going to be creating a new file called urls.py. Um, and currently this is empty, but for the convenience, I'm just going to copy over everything that is in the other urls.py file inside of the CRUD folder and just place this inside of the API folder. And let's get rid of all of the text that is available there. And also let's get rid of this URL pattern that already exists. And let's just save this. So now that we've defined a place where we're going to be creating URLs inside of our API folder, we need to make sure that all of the URLs that are going to be created here in the future are also included in the URLs that by file of the CRUD folder. Now, doing that is quite easy. We're going to go to the URLs that by file and just delete all of the text that is there. 
And next to the import of path, we're also going to import include. Now you can see right here that it already has a path listed for the admin portal of Django, and we're going to be creating a new path below it. And in that path, the first part of the URL is just going to be these parentheses and nothing more. And then we do a comma and we can do include. And in here we say that we want to include api.urls. And this is going to take all of the URLs from the API folder and include them in here as well, so that we have one complete list of all of the URLs inside of our project. So let's save this. Okay, so now the integration between our app of API and our main project of CRUD is all complete. Now the last thing I want to do for this backend setup is make sure that our database is available. Because currently you can see if we close the API and the CRUD folders that we have a file for manage.py, uh, but we don't actually have any place where our database is visible. Now, of course, at the moment we have not defined any tables, but by default Django already creates some tables to help us and to make sure that everything works. So what we're going to be doing is make migrations and then migrate it so that we at least already see our database. So inside of the terminal, we make sure that we are in the backend folder and that our virtual environment is on. And we do python manage.py. And the first command is make migrations. And currently it says that there are no changes detected, which is fine. And then we're going to do python manage.py migrate. And you will see that it has created a bunch of different tables by default. And also inside of our project, we can now see that a new file has appeared called db.sqlite3. And that means that our database is now connected to our project. Now, as a very final step, we can also start our server and make sure that everything is okay. So let's do python manage.py and then run server. And we can indeed see that the system is now up on our local computer with no issues. And when we go to the URL that was listed in our terminal, you can see that the install has worked successfully and that we're now up and running. And that is actually all for this video. In this video, I showed you how you need to set up your Python Django backend. In the next video, we're going to continue and I'm going to show you how we can create our React.js frontend and make sure that the React.js frontend can communicate with our Django backend. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.